Hey there, today we're diving into work in progress or WIP reporting for your building or your general contracting business, how to get that number into your QuickBooks system. This is something that a lot of folks are confused about, but it is really quite simple. I wanna demystify it and break it down for you. If you like this and you wanna check out more, we have a full course, Builder Books Academy out there, definitely check it out. But I'm gonna dive into this concept of WIP. And so what this is, is that at any given point in a project, as a contractor, we're invoicing and receiving payments for work, and at almost no point in time is that amount that we've invoiced equal to the amount of work we've done. Think about the concept of a deposit, right? We have a project that's about to start, we get a deposit, $50,000, we haven't done a single bit of work yet. We're kind of overbilled, right? We have to do work to earn that. And that's fine, what we wanna do is we wanna practice that, we wanna be ahead on our billing so that we have cash to pay our subcontractors and pay for materials, et cetera. So it's a good operational tactic, but we also wanna make sure that our reporting is not skewed. If I put that $50,000 deposit immediately to revenue, it's gonna show this big revenue, I haven't done any work yet. So we can combat that in two ways. One is tracking a deposits account within QuickBooks Online, and the second is to make month ending WIP journal entries. I'm gonna show you both of those today. All right, and what that does is it helps us to keep collecting that cash ahead of time, but make sure that we're, our books and our profit and loss are a little bit more conservative so we're not telling ourselves a story that's gonna end up not being true in the end, all right? So I'm gonna take you through a few examples here. These two projects I have on my left-hand screen, a little WIP template that we've worked up. And it's really simple. You can make yourself one of these really easily. We'll have one to share as well. But basically we have our job. And I'm gonna walk you through this side. So let's focus on the left side of my screen here. I'll increase the size of that as well. So we have the original price of the project. That should be your contract price. And then the original cost of the project, right? What did we think we were gonna bill it for? What did we think the costs were going to be for that project, okay? And then we can have a system that automatically calculates our gross profit. It's gonna be the, the difference between the two, a gross profit percentage. And then we might have some change orders or selections or changes to the contract price. So I use the term change order. It might just be that you're billing time and material. So it just might be like the price increase because the estimate went up or we have a selection. Whatever the, the deal is, it's my price is currently increased. So in this case, I've got a little bit going on with Wildwood and a little bit more going on at Cherry. The price of my change order is the price of my costs. Okay, that's gonna give you a change order GP. All right, then that gives us the total contract, pretty much the, the sum of the price here. So this is the total price that I'm expecting to get from this project. We know it's gonna change, right? Especially with time and materials or even a fixed price project, we might have more change orders. Here's my total contract price and here's my total estimated costs, right? As far as I know it. Now, how do we get all these, by the way? We should be using a system like Builder Trend or Co-Construct or something like that to help track that. I'm not gonna get into that on this video here. I use Builder Trend, I have plenty of videos out, out there. Basically, this is a really easy report for me to run. Just, you know, what is the current running price of my project and what is the current running cost of my project? That's gonna give us our estimated gross profit, estimated gross profit percentage, and then here's where we're gonna do some work on a monthly basis. We're gonna put in what are our costs to date and then how much have we billed the customer. And then this little template's just going to calculate for us, here's how much revenue we've earned based on a cost complete model. Here's how much revenue we kind of should have billed. And then compare that to what we've actually billed will give us our, our WIP difference. So to find that, we're gonna go into our projects. Before we do, we wanna create a couple accounts within QuickBooks. So I'm gonna shift over to QuickBooks and look at my chart of accounts. For one, we should definitely have a deposits on hand as an other current liability. When you get a job for the first time and you, you're probably not starting for a while, you get a deposit, $40,000, $50,000, 10% of the contract, whatever it is, we should be putting that on the liability. It's really exciting to put it in revenue and say, look at my revenue is going up. But really what this is, is we're holding on to the money for our customer. We're stewards of that money. It's a liability. We owe it back to our customer once we do some work, right? And so... That's, we put it as a liability. Think of it like a security deposit. So we have that account, and then I have another one called WIP, which is my work in process. And this is any difference to what I've billed as, re as revenue that I want to offset. And again, it's a way of, for me, making my P&L per project look more conservative, look more realistic to what it's actually going to be, okay? And then we also need to have a WIP on the income side as well. So a WIP over or under build on the income side. Now this is nothing that your customer is going to see at all. So don't worry about that. They're gonna get their invoices, they're gonna get their bills, they're gonna pay those, and they're gonna see what their totals are. We are gonna be tracking this for our purposes, okay? So get those accounts set up. Now let's go to our project and let's see what's going on here. So I have first Wildwood, okay? So for Wildwood, I've got um, some costs to date here. So I've got um, uh, 32,834, in one cent, costs to date. Now I'm expecting to have total costs of 166,000. And so that means that I am 
19% complete. So what the system's going to do is it's going to estimate, well, 19% complete, 19% of my revenue, this is how much revenue I've earned to date, okay? That's what the system's telling me there. I've earned 19% of my total contract, 242,000, okay? So we're gonna compare that to what I've actually billed. What I have here is some billings, 81,000 in revenue, 81,499, and nine cents in revenue. And I also have a deposit on this project. I'd see that if I went to the balance sheet, I'm not going to right now, I'm just gonna bounce out to transactions and see if I can just do invoices. And I've got my initial production start, 48,000. So I've also got a deposit there. So I'm gonna put my 48,000 as a deposit. Okay, so I've totally billed 129,000. So this system's telling me that I'm 81,000 over. And again, that's a good thing from a cash flow management standpoint. The customer's provided me um, 81,000 in excess cash. Now I can go and complete the job, right? But I don't wanna be reporting on you know this profitability right here, a 60% profit margin. That doesn't really mean much to me because eventually the costs are gonna catch up to me. That's what this means here. All right, so there's Wildwood, kind of ready to go. Let's do the same thing with Sherry, 4910 Sherry. So go to that project over here, all right? And I've got my original price, and I've got a bigger change order here, right? Uh, looks like I gave them a little bit of a discount on the gross profit percentage there, but totally I'm looking at a 31% profit as my target there. So let's look at my costs to date on uh, Sherry over here. So I have 126,000. 947 and 28 cents. So I'll put that in and that's 67% complete. I, I've earned 186,000 in revenue. All right, excellent. And then what have I actually built? In this case, I've got 244,000 in revenue. All right, now I know on this project, I actually have zero on deposits. So I treated all of the transactions, including that initial deposit as revenue. I probably shouldn't have done that. Now I'm gonna be able to fix it with this whip that I'm about to do, but I have zero dollars in deposits. So I'm currently overbilled 57,000 on this one. Again, it's a good thing operationally to be overbilled. We're getting paid in advance, but what I wanna do is stay conservative with my reporting here to make sure that I'm not expecting a profit margin that is higher than it's actually going to be. So we're gonna make a journal entry. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you this journal entry. We're gonna make one per month. That's gonna include all our projects. So we don't need to make one journal entry for every single project. In fact, when I say one per month, we're actually gonna make one and just carry it forward from month to month. So we're gonna do a journal entry here, all right? And so I'm gonna do this journal entry. Typically it's at the end of the month. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one here. And this is just gonna be WIP, okay? And we're gonna pull up a few accounts here. So the first is our WIP income, and then the second is the liability. And we're really just moving from income to liability, okay? So that's what this one is right here. So I'm going to decrease my revenue, and I'm going to increase my liability. So I'm gonna debit the revenue, and I'm going to credit the liability. So in this case, for Wildwood, I'm 81,000. 609, and then I'm gonna credit it on this side. All right, and I wanna put in that project as, as well. So there's Wildwood, okay? And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna do income, and then I'm going to do the liability. Oh, I believe, yeah, okay, good. Uh, same kind of thing here, 57,829. 57,829 is my number. So I'm decreasing revenue, I'm increasing my liability to help keep myself honest, okay? This is an advanced technique that top builders are using to ensure that we're not reporting on projects being more profitable than they're ultimately going to end up being. It's helping us stay conservative and helping us cash flow plan as well. So if I save and close this transaction, go back to my project here and look at my profit margin has decreased because I've got my residential remodeling, I got my billings, and then this whip over under bills brings my revenue down to what the earned revenue should be, giving me the profit margin that is way closer to what I'm expecting to have earned, all right? It's a conservative way of looking at these projects. The customer never sees this, but it's gonna help me to stay conservative and see that I'm, you know, I'm, it, in excess right over here. If I go to this one and refresh, same kind of thing with Wildwood. I wanna see my profit margin is going to, whoa. 
All right, and basically I was double counting the deposit. So that's my bad on the template. Let me just go ahead and correct that real quick. We have that, um, let's see if I can find that journal entry. Go all transactions, there's my whip. All right, I messed that up, my bad. This was um, 33,609. So my, um, yeah, if I go to my overview here, there's a 47,890. Yeah, I was double counting the, the deposit. So my bad on that. I wanna to get to a profit margin of 31.4 and that's exactly where I'm at, all right? And then where does this turn out on the balance sheet? If we go to our balance sheet here, uh, I'll just refresh this quick. We're gonna see this in the liability. And th this is gonna just kind of keep running with us, okay? As we move on, we're gonna take that same journal entry and just change it to August. We don't need to have one every single month. That's gonna get confusing. Just keep moving it forward. So in my liabilities right here, current liabilities, I'm gonna have over and under build is gonna be a deposits on hand, as well as if I move the date here, as well as my uh, whip. Okay, and that's what you wanna do because what we're looking to do here is stay conservative with all of this and make sure that we're not over-reporting. So there's my over and under build. I've got my deposits on hand and my whip, all right? Stay conservative. It's really exciting to have all this extra revenue and show a 48% gross margin, but if we don't think we're gonna end up there, what's the point of doing that? We wanna be able to stay realistic with it and make sure we're tracking this as a liability, all right? Let me know your questions on this. Again, this is an advanced technique. This is like top builders are doing this to make sure that their books are in line, that we're, you know, Staying conservative so that we can make sure we have cash at the end of the day. Let me know your questions on this or if you do it a different way, I'd love to hear from you. And again, we talk about this in everything uh, that has to do with QuickBooks Online for Builders in our course, Builder Books Academy. Definitely check it out. I'll see you in the next video.